there's a dozen ways that you can build a wall using pretty much the same materials. Clay soil, straw, uh, sand, sticks. Okay, this is cob, this is clay wattle, that's lift straw, this is straw bale. And each of those has its own particular attributes as far as wall thickness, thermal properties, sculptural properties, speed, materials that they require, etc., etc. This is a wall system that we developed here at Emerald Earth that we call clay wattle, which is a variation on traditional wattle and daub, except that instead of weaving with sticks, which is what traditional wattle and daub is, we're weaving instead with bundles of straw and clay. If you've got a wooden frame that's supporting the weight of your roof and you just want to get an earthen wall up quickly, this is a good way to do it. It's also really strong as far as shear. This is the same technique. It's just plastered flat. Yeah, so this is a straw bale wall. Straw bale has a couple of great advantages. One is that the walls go up really quickly because you're working with these very large building blocks that you can just stack up on top of each other. Straw bales are big blocks. So you can curve a straw bale wall. You can give it a gentle curve but it's hard to get a very tight curve with it because you're starting off with a block that's two feet by four feet almost. And the bales are most easy to use in a situation where you don't have a lot of openings. Once you get to uh, where you're framing in lots of windows and doors and stuff like that, the bales can become a little bit more cumbersome to work with. So we switch over to this system, which is called light straw clay or slip straw. And you can see, for example, there's this fairly narrow area between this door frame and the wall here. And it would have been very awkward to do that with straw bale. You can frame any size and shape of openings. So you might make different decisions based on your site, based on who you are, what you need, as to which materials to use. But even within the same building, different parts of the building need to do different tasks. And there are different building systems that are going to be better suited to that task. You see these big, pretty flat walls without many windows? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's straw bale. Straw bale is probably the most difficult system to get windows into. So in a part of the building where we want lots of windows, we just don't do straw bale. This is cob. And you can tell pretty much by the sculpturalness and the curviness of it. Cob on the opposite extreme, you're sculpting your house by hand with, with handfuls of mud. So there's absolutely no limitation on what the shape and form of the wall can be. So that's one reason why we end up combining different wall systems in the same structure. Is there's one part of your building, whether it's your fireplace, mantelpiece, your bedroom, that you really want to have some special sculptural design elements. So that would be a place where you might choose to use cob. And the bench is cob. And it's a heated bench. The flue from the wood stove over here passes through that cob bench and heats it up when the stove is going. So then the whole bench becomes a radiator. You can fire the stove for 45 minutes or an hour, heat up the cob, let your fire go out, and then that cob bench will continue to heat the space for many hours after that. The cob also gives you excellent thermal mass heat storage. And the cob is here for thermal mass. It absorbs heat from the wood stove when the wood stove is going. It also absorbs sun, sunlight directly in the winter coming through these windows. So it's a critical part of a successful passive solar design. A building that's going to heat itself and cool itself as much as possible it needs thermal mass as well as insulation. So that's another reason why we end up doing lots of hybrid stuff. Straw bale and cob hybrid buildings are very common. So this is actually a hybrid structure. The back, the part to the left of this wall is straw bale, and the part to the right is cob. And what you tend to see is straw bale walls on the north side, where you most want your insulation, and cob on the south side of the building, the part that gets hit by the winter sun. So the cob can absorb the heat from the winter sun and re-radiate that into your building later to help warm it. That also makes sense because you tend to have most of your glazing, most of your windows on the south side. And if you want a whole lot of windows on one wall, 
Straw bale ends up being a difficult choice to do that with just because of the size of the blocks. And you can see now that the earthen plaster's in place, you can't really tell where the cob stops and the straw bale starts. So that's one very simple and obvious hybrid system. That much curvature would be really difficult to do with straw bale. And then this wall on the west side of the building over here, that's the, it's called slip straw or light straw clay. And that's the one where you take a straw bale, open up the straw bale, coat the loose straw in a little bit of clay slip and then pack it into a form. Up at the top here where we wanted to get the bottles into the wall, we just stopped and switched over to cob for that foot. And then we went back to slip straw above that. They work extremely well together. I mean, it's all made out of the same stuff. It's all clay and straw, sometimes with sand or sticks. The clay is sort of the universal um, adhesive that connects everything else together. And then from this point up, we switch to a different wall system, which is the clay waddle. Basically, just because we wanted the wall much, much thinner at that point. It goes from about a 16 inch thick wall to about a six inch thick wall. And you can do that out of cob, but it's just easier to do it with a different system.